My goal over the last few years was to be the best version of myself on and off the bike. So at the beginning of 2020, I definitely made some lifestyle changes to help me accomplish those goals. What's up? It's uh, 4 a.m. Really early. It's how I start every morning. Little meditation sets a tone for the day. I started practicing meditation in August of 2019. And before I did, I was always like a little stressed, a little nervous, and my mind was just always a bit jumbled. Now I'm just like way more present, not just on my bike, but just all throughout the day. And being more present entail just makes me more focused, uh, more motivated. And honestly, it's just, uh, made me more creative as well this year. So it definitely changed my life in many ways and uh, it works for me for sure. I do 25 minutes of that every day, no matter what. And from the meditation, I make my way to the hot tub that's already heated up. And in the hot tub, I spend about 30 minutes in there and it's all just like a warm up basically to get my muscles going. And then I also do a little bit of cardio in there as well. You know, one thing I always think about is if I would have been on like the stretching kick like before, I could have prevented some injuries, but at least I'm doing it now and sometimes it takes uh, learning the hard way before you like make a change. Finished hot tub warm up and uh, now Come in here and do the core workout in the garage. Always use the garage just because it's a lot of space in here. And uh, turn on the music, feel the vibes, and uh, get it going. Sometimes like strengthening your core is all about, you know, stabilization and stabilization is the most important thing in flatland is just being really centered with your body and your core really helps you with that. So it goes hand in hand with uh, pretty much every trick that I do on my bike. So it helps. Silly, there is my boy, there is my boy, and there is my boy, and he's up, and he's up, and he's up. What you doing? What you doing in here? What you doing in here, Silly? Oh, let's go, let's go. Oh, he's crazy. He's crazy. Turn off the light. Turn off the light. Right there. Right there. There you go. Three! Yay! When I'm doing this stuff throughout the day, especially in there making breakfast for Ledge and hanging out with Vanessa is knowing that I kind of got to switch off that dad mode and go into rider mode really quick because when I get out in the garage, it is being mentally prepared just like I would be at a contest. So I almost start the process of getting mentally ready before I even walk out of the house. So right now it is around 7.25. I have around 30 minutes to get ready. Uh, Marty calls at eight o'clock on the dot every Wednesday for this call. So goal is right now to just 
get as warmed up as possible on my bike and mentally prepare for this uh, three minute contest run. was an interesting year for me because my son was born and I just really was looking to get re-motivated through riding my bike and I just knew I needed something different to bring the fire back like I really wanted to and that's why I reached out to Marty and hired him as a flatland coach. It just meant everything for me to kind of bring him on board to my team to help me be a, a better rider. So going into every video call, it's always the same. He sends me a Zoom call link and that link brings me to a call where he's kind of looking at me just like he's in a, a basically a judging chair getting ready to judge my contest run. The craziest part about that whole process is waiting to get that link because I know when the link comes through, I need to be ready because as soon as I click it, he's pretty much gonna say, hey man, how you doing? You ready to do this thing? And then I turn on my music and I roll just like it's a contest. Five minutes before the call and uh, just like a normal contest, nerves kick in. Gotta use the bathroom. Well, every time, never fails. I'll be right back. Here we go. What's good. up, Terry? All good. Uh, how you doing? Not bad, not bad. Looking forward to see you ride in a bit. How long have you been warming up today? Uh, I rode probably less than 30 minutes, probably like 25 minutes. Okay. So. All right. Cool. Well, um, I'm going to let you do your thing, which is your full run, and I've got my timer ready here, so whenever you're ready, uh, I'll let you go. Alright, I'm going to get my music set, and then I'm going to roll out. Awesome. Do your thing. The front wheel uh, came loose and like turned sideways towards the brake pad. Oh, all right. What did we learn? To make sure my bike is, uh, the pegs are, are tight. Exactly, exactly. Well, uh, you know, that's just one thing, but uh, besides that, you looked very calm. Um, in my opinion, you didn't look nervous and uh, you held it together very well until the first mistake and then you started to perhaps uh, speed up a little bit because you only had 10 seconds left and then you didn't have enough time to finish your run the way you wanted to finish it. That's my reflection on, on your run. First time my bike's ever malfunctioned on a video call but... You know what? Prepare for anything. Especially you had one more stress factor which is your body over, over on your left side and uh, who's filming so I think that camera must have brought a little extra pressure so you handled handled everything very well today okay thanks man appreciate it and uh, next time I will make sure those pegs are super tight so uh, I felt the wheel come loose like when I was practicing getting ready for the call but uh, 
dumb mistake. I didn't take the socket wrench, take two minutes to make sure that peg was tight. And that kind of cost me in the end 100% because dead middle of the run on the fourth combo, uh, the wheel twisted to the side and uh, the wheel was rubbing against the brake pads and it sucked. But I guess uh, I learned from this and uh, if I hear something weird on the bike again, I'll definitely make sure, make sure it's tight, so. After the call was over, uh, it was definitely a time to kind of reflect a little bit and be bummed, you know, that's, that's kind of how it goes. If, if you have a bad call or if you have a, a bad actual contest run, sometimes it takes a, a couple minutes to get over it. And I was kind of in the process of trying to get over it. And then my wife walks out with my son and always that just kind of immediately puts me in a better mood. So I kind of rode him on the bike a little bit and thankfully I was over it. Like as soon as I seen his face having fun on my bike. So after that, I was like, you know what, let me make this right. So the plan was to just uh, give the kid to my wife for a second and just uh, go for that last trick that I tried in the video call with Marty and just nail it. And uh, I ended up doing that and that uh, kind of reset my tone for the rest of the day and got me a little stoked. Felt good, but doesn't excuse me for, for what I did. So Friday, another call, make it all better. But I feel good right now. I know a lot of people look at BMX in general and Flatland as well, and they're like, how is uh, having a coach, how is that beneficial? This stuff is really supposed to be freestyle and you do what you wanna do. I really look at having a coach the same way. It's still something different. It's still something that's my personal decision. To me, that's freestyle, knowing that I'm doing something that not everyone's doing. It works for me, I enjoy it. It's keeping it fun for me, it's keeping it different, and it's definitely keeping me motivated. <laughs> Two snacks during the day. One of them. Ledge. Favorite snack? Ledge, what? Do you Almond want? butter and apple. Ledge. What's all this going on? I'll head out into the garage uh, at 10 o'clock for that next session. And that's the session during the day where I try to just do any new tricks I'm working on, stuff that's fun, stuff that's snappy, and typically it's stuff that I'm trying to get ready for the following year. So a lot of the stuff that I was kind of working on today was uh, stuff that's set for 2021 and just some different techniques and moves that I'm working on. trying to end off every riding session with like something that's super hard for me and uh, only pulled this like four or five times. It was a dream trick a couple years ago and now I've at least been trying to just dial it in as much as I can, get it a couple times a week. So I'm psyched on it. Let's uh, see if I can get it. think about Marty as a coach he's really much more than a coach uh, because you know he could have easily said like nah man like we're working on contest routines right now like let's stick to the plan but 
He really noticed that I wanted to feed that fire of just kind of going out and learning a bunch of new stuff. And uh, it's a true testament to how great Marty is as a coach and his ability to like recognize what I wanted as a rider and coach me in the direction that I needed to accomplish my personal goals. It just really shows that he's much more than just a coach. He's a friend, he's a great person, and he's really looking out for the best uh, of anyone that he works with, so it's awesome. Pretty much every day I, I do some protein. Today I'm doing tuna, and uh, got some avocado in there for some good fats. Got a lime, uh, use that for seasoning, uh, and a bell pepper for my greens. I can eat this every day, <laughs> and I do. Right when I started working with Marty, we were talking about, you know, Terry in those younger years, you know, like those early 2000s, and he pulled up some old footage of me, and he immediately noticed, like, dude, you were uh, about 10 pounds lighter. And my first thought was, like, who cares? You know, I didn't really think it was going to make that big of a difference. I guess I was a little bit naive and maybe even had an ego on my shoulder to think that, uh, that those 10 pounds just, you know, weren't going to affect me at all. But he said, I'm telling you, man, you're much quicker on the bike. I didn't realize that over the years, my metabolism had slowed down a little bit. I had lost a lot of muscle. I'd gained a little bit of fat. And uh, that really didn't trigger it for me, even him telling me that. But what really, really triggered it for me was uh, I was just about to go to China. I was riding with Mickey in the garage. I stepped off the front of the bike and my heel hit the ground and I injured my back. And I ended up at a physical therapist like one week before China and I'm sitting there and they got these needles in my back and the physical therapist looked at me and said, man, I really think this could have been prevented if you would have had a stronger core. And that was the moment where it kind of triggered in my mind that if I'm really trying to be the best I've ever been on my bike, I'm not doing myself justice by not taking care of my body the way I need to be. It was that kind of switching point for me where I'm like, it's time to get serious and it's time to uh, start taking care of my body like I need to. When I started this fitness journey, I just kind of like built my own program. I built my own diet and I built my own workouts and it was working for the most part. I was losing weight, I was getting a little bit stronger, but the problem was I wasn't taking proper rest days, I wasn't even eating enough food to give me enough energy on the bike. So thankfully Red Bull stepped in and the first thing that they noticed was like, man, you're running too much. Red Bull heard the story that I have flat-footed feet and uh, their team took a look at the photos and immediately they kind of dissected the problem that we need to get you off your feet and into the hot tub or into your swimming pool to do your cardio there to really take that impact off of your legs and your feet so you not only feel better throughout the day but you feel better on your bike when you're out there training and stuff so that was the game changer for me is like having some one step in and help me make a more professional plan on how I was going to maintain this whole program and not just like be crazy all over the place and trying to get in shape by myself. So. A hundred percent my drive and motivation this year was to be an inspiration for my son. There's nothing more that I want than him to grow up and look at the photos and the videos from this year and see all that I accomplished and know that he can do the exact same thing. All you need to have is drive, you need to have an imagination, you need to be positive, and you just need to keep pushing for the things that you want in life. I just want him to know that by looking at his dad and knowing that his dad did it. You never know how close you are to getting what you want unless you just keep pushing forward and keep going after it. I just owed it to myself, I owed it to my family, I owed it to my son to like just be the best version of myself. I just had too many years invested to not go after what I really wanted and that was just to, to be the best bike rider that I could be. Winning Nor Cup was such a surprise this year because the level of riding these days is just completely insane and there's so many like young kids coming up that has so much talent. 
to be still recognized as a progressive rider and to even be considered in those top guys, it, I'm just super honored by it. And I'm inspired by everyone out there that's, that's pushing flatland. There's just so many people doing that. So it's a testament really to Marty's coaching abilities to where he was able to adapt and recognize what I wanted as a rider and uh, keep me motivated and keep pushing me in the direction that I wanted to go. And I'm so thankful for him to that because I definitely would not have that Nora Cup if he wouldn't have pushed me in that direction after I wanted to do it. Everything that I accomplished this year on my bike would not have been possible if I wouldn't have been riding with Mickey. Look at Flatland and it's typically just like an individual thing where you accomplish these goals by yourself and you learn these tricks by yourself. But when I ride with him, it's completely different because we have this history that dates back 20 years. And we know deep down that Flatland is what brought us together and it's helped us accomplish so much in our lives that when we ride together, it's much more than just tricks on a bike. It's us pushing each other, not only as riders, but as individuals in life. And that's what's so awesome is that we can feel that every single time we ride and there's no way that I would have did half of what I did this year if I wouldn't have had him just there right beside me being a part of it. So I had a really productive day today, uh, but this time right here is what it's all about, hanging out with the family, uh, spending time with them, and uh, just recharging and getting ready for tomorrow. Do it all over again. That's what's super important to me is making sure that I'm done riding and that I'm in there with him, putting him down for bed, giving him that last good night and that kiss on the forehead. That right there pretty much makes all the riding, all the work, that I did throughout the day, it just makes it worth it.